Ian, it's a rare week, isn't it, in terms of uh, workload for you? You've you've had a, a welcome opportunity to do some extra bits with the lads on the training ground. How's it going? It's great. Um, I think everybody knows that I like to be out on the training pitch and work on work with the players and work on what we we need to. Um, so yeah, just to have. I think this is the first full week since before Torquay. Um, so that was the first time we kind of got a full working week and then since then it's just been so many games so it's nice to get out on the training pitch have a couple of really good quality training sessions and be able to get into a bit more detail with the lads How does it differ that those kind of sessions versus a recovery session or a pre-match session for example what are the key differences? I mean normally we, we, we're constantly kind of recovering and just preparing so then the sessions are a bit shorter the intensity is maybe a little bit lower and it's a lot about the detail and some of the tactical things and and just trying to get the information in before we get in the game. But now we've had like yesterday and today where we can work and then tomorrow they can have some recovery, which means we can work at a far higher intensity and, and then get some much more kind of game real actions into the training. And I think also put way more competition into the training, which has been brilliant. You know, the lads are applying themselves unbelievably well. Um, everybody's on it at the moment so yeah I think the the sessions have been it's a big difference when you've got a full week compared to you know just constantly recovering the players we sent our cameras down to training today and a, a couple of the sessions we didn't really understand what on earth was going on the lads seemed to be perfectly uh, yeah. sort of knowledgeable about what was happening but it just seemed like a bit chaotic from our point of view can you just explain some of the stuff that you were working on and, and how how you help the lads understand what they want from that session yeah, I mean, like yesterday we worked in slightly bigger areas, so we, we did some kind of build-up play and working through the, the ball through the thirds, but a lot about trying to break lines and attack with the pace that we have been. But a lot of the focus has been on reaction to ball loss and the, the pressing when we lose the ball and, and try to maintain that kind of focus and intensity. And then today that was a big theme, you know, winning the ball, quickly attacking, losing the ball, quickly getting into shape. And we did it in tight areas and like you say, it looked chaotic, but... They do, we have to overload the brain a little bit as well and really make them demand a lot from, from their decision making. So the small areas is just demanding so much from the, the decision making. So sometimes the session can look a little chaotic, but you can see the energy from the players is coming out and everybody's kind of focused and um, yeah, in, intense when we lose the ball. And I think they're some of the characteristics that we really want to say look that's us that's part of how we want the play going forward so we need to put it in every day at training so um, and then we finish with some small sided games which the players like you know um, lots of competition and goals going in so yeah it was a it was a good session I think it would be fair to say that key or one of the key elements to our recent success has been the intensity of the performances mm. we're at the end of a long season here you know how are the legs in the camp you, have you got any concerns about burnout no not really. Um, they've been, I mean, to think we've played with this intensity when we've been playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesdays is, is fantastic, really. I mean, it's a testament to the medical team, fitness coaches, that the players are in the shape that they're in. But I also think the players are enjoying the way that we play and that gives you a natural energy and, and want to play with that intensity. And of course, when we see the result of because we're playing with that intensity, what happens as a consequence? I think the players want to do it more. So, yeah, I mean, we, we're conscious that we, we need to work hard in the training sessions that we're in, but then we really need to make sure they get the rest so that they're fresh when we go into the games. We're on an amazing run, top of the form table. Um, in a way, is it is it slightly annoying to you that we haven't got our next game midweek? Or were you quite um, happy and was the, was the full week on the training ground at the right time for you, do you think? A bit of both. We're playing so well, I can't wait for the next game. Um, but at the same time, I love to be on the training pitch. So then it was. it's great to just go into the bit more detail and work with all the players out there. So um, I guess it's positive and negative. But uh, yeah, when, these, when we're playing so well on top of the form table, we want the next game quick. But now it's going to be Saturday. And, and I think we, we make the most of the time that we've got with the players in the week to prepare them well. And then we're, then we're ready to go for each game. It's a sign of the season, isn't it? When we think of one week gap between games, it's a, lot, yeah. a big a big break. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's Bromley at the weekend. Um, Fitness-wise, in terms of injuries, how are we looking? Connor Rawlinson, he's been training recently, hasn't he? Yeah, Connor's fine. I think pretty much everybody, other than Alex Lacey and Carl Roberts, who we know about, um, everybody else is fit. So it's good to be at this stage of the season and have 
fit players and, and, and tough decisions surrounding the team and the squad to make. Damien McCrory, he obviously wasn't involved in the squad at the weekend. Was that a injury problem or was it just selection? A bit of selection really and a bit a bit kind of tactical as well because we knew Connell was coming back and maybe covering um, as one of the three central defenders and then you know Calvin Miller's played a lot of football and, and played and we were thinking if he has to come off maybe Ben Turner comes on, Chicks moves up so we, we wanted to give ourselves some, some different options in there. Mm. Bromley? Uh, we know that they're going to give us a, a really tough game. It's a, it's a thrilling end to the season, isn't it, yeah. in terms of the playoff picture? And obviously, we have a lot to play for. We could even end up in fourth position if other results go our way and we win. What's your attitude going into Saturday? We want to win the game. Um, I think that we are, we've are we been in a really good place in terms of performance and how we want to play. So I think the most important thing is that we maintain that. Any, any drop-off will be, a, you know, any drop-off in mindset is going to, cause a drop off in in how we play I think performance wise so I think we have to approach it as if you know it's a playoff game like one that we need to win so we want to go in with that kind of mindset and we know that Bromley will be all in because they have to be Uh, Bromley need to win so should create quite an open game I think which you know is an enjoyable one for for me. On a separate note, great news from the club um, earlier this week that the academy will be continuing no matter if we're in the EFL or, or in the National League next season. You know, What does that mean to you as the head coach of the club? I think I've, I've had quite a few conversations with the guys in the academy since I've been in. Um, you know, and I think they've been quite good and respectful knowing that I've come into a crazy part of the season when it's just been so many games. But And so they, they, you know, I know that they've not been... A, in wanting too much but we've definitely had some really good dialogues about look how can we work going forwards the importance of trying to create a pathway for young players so that they can meet the first team and, and be around the first team and, and get some experience through the, throughout the season because uh, they need to build up their experience of being with the first team so there has to be a pathway I think for us to develop our own players is important I think it's important for the fans to have homegrown players I think it's important for us as a club and I, I, you know, my history is coming. I started as an academy coach years ago, so I know the value of feeling valued as a coach, and that you're working towards something. So I think it's great that the club can still invest and put into that system, and you know, produce players. Tyrese has come through now. He started his journey with the first team, and and you know, he's a talented young player that can score goals. You know, still needs a lot of work, but is somebody that's in and we want to create a pathway for more of them so I think it's great and and, you know I want to work close with the the lads there and create you know the playing identity that we've got with Knots now and the way in which we're playing out with the first team you know we want to see that going through the, the group so that it becomes synonymous with who we are.